Hello, welcome to the Bakwas channel for self-paced tutorials on Internet of Things. This video demonstrates the installation and testing of the MakerPi RP2040 robotics controller board from Cytron. The objectives of this video are to illustrate key setup requirements for MakerPi RP2040 robotics controller board. There is a sibling board that has a surface mounted Raspberry Pi Pico, whereas the current robotics controller board has only the RP2040 chip. Second, run demonstrations without any programming since the following examples are pre-installed on the board. Play a tune during startup. Display a lighting sequence with GPIO status LEDs. Run color fading with a single RGB LED that conforms to WS2812B NeoPixel standard and run DC and servo motors. The postfix numerals on the RP2040 come from the following nomenclature convention. Why is the chip called RP2040? Here is the decomposition. The initials RP derived from Raspberry Pi. First digit, the number of processor cores is 2. The second digit, loosely which type of processor, in this case it is the Cortex M0 Plus and is expressed as 0. The third digit is an evaluation of the function on the slide with the result equal to 4. The final digit is an evaluation of the function on the slide with the result equal to 0. If there is no onboard non-volatile storage, then the value is also 0. features of the RP2040 chip are direct memory access DMA controller, interpolator and integer divider peripherals, 30 general purpose input output GPIO pins, 4 for analog ADC input use, peripherals, 
16 pulse width modulation PWM channels, 2 serial peripheral interface SPI controllers, 2 inter integrated circuit I squared C controllers, 8 programmable input output PIO state machines, 2 on chip phase lock loop PLL to generate USB and core clocks. USB 1.1 controller and physical layer PHY with host and device support. RP2040 chip itself has the following features that are used by the robotics controller board. Core is the dual Cortex M0 Plus processors with 133 MHz clock speed, SRAM 264 kilobytes in six banks, GPIO 30 pins, four for analog, including one for internal temperature measurements, USB 1.1 host or device, PIO extended peripheral support, SPI flash, six dedicated, and dedicated hardware for commonly used peripherals. The robotics controller board has the following key features. The microcontroller is the Raspberry Pi RP2040 dual core Cortex M0 Plus at 133 MHz with 264 kilobytes RAM and 2 megabytes flash memory. The controller for robotics interfaces with four servo and two DC motors with individual quick test buttons forward and reverse for each DC motor interface. There is a dual channel H bridge to control the two DC motors or one stepper motor. There are separate onboard switches for power and reset. The shield obtains its power needs from the host microcomputer there is a dedicated power switch that controls the supply from any of the three power inputs. There is a piezoelectric with a mute switch at GP22. There are two push buttons for GP20 and GP21 pins. There are two WS2812B RGB LEDs connected to GP18. There are seven ports for seed grove component or sensor connections. Power can be selected automatically from USB, LiPo or wind terminal. And it comes preloaded with the CircuitPython programming language.
are seven seed studio growth ports on the board. Each port is paired with two GPIO pins. All ports support pulse width modulation, PWM, to control the effective power through the respective GPIO pins. All Pico analog pins are supported. The other interfaces are serial peripheral SPI on most ports, inter-integrated I2C on all ports but not on GP28, universal asynchronous receive and transmit UART on three ports. The pin assignments and corresponding mnemonics are shown in the table for reference purposes. Please note that some interfaces are not supported on some pins. PWM reduces the average power delivered by an electrical signal. This technique is very effective for controlling motors or other robotics devices where the switching frequency does not affect the load. SPI is a short distance communication protocol that is faster than I2C or UART. I2C uses synchronous, multi-master, multi-slave, packet-switched, single-ended serial communication. Serial Peripheral Interface, SPI, is a popular standard owing to some flexibility in the deployment of the data size and the underlying software library. The interface requires four logic signals, chip select, serial clock, master in, slave out, or MISO, master out, slave in, or MOSI. A single master can control multiple slave devices. The data transmission is full duplex, resulting in higher throughput than the other interfaces on the board. Furthermore, the software requirements are simple. I squared C uses only two bidirectional open collector or open drain lines, serial data line SDA and serial clock line SCL. Both lines have pull up resistors. The bus has two roles for nodes, master and slave. The bus is a multi-master bus with the potential for more than one master. All transactions begin with a start signal and end with a stop signal. Owing to shared bus design, a fault in any one device may halt the entire bus. The RGB LED conforms to WS2812B addressable standard. Some vendors refer to the RGB LED as NeoPixel. The part consists of an integrated circuit for control and three discrete LEDs, 
one for each primary RGB color in the same package. These components are encased with four exposed terminals for the connections that may be daisy chained. The RGB LED is driven by GP18 pin. The programmable buttons are accessible from user programs. There are two buttons. One button can be accessed with GP20 pin and the other button with GP21 pin. The buzzer is accessed with GP22 pin. It can generate beeps and tones. The tones can be controlled by specifying frequency and duration. There is a switch to mute the buzzer. The status LEDs display the state of the corresponding GPIO pins assigned to the seven Grove ports. While each Grove port has two GPIO pins assigned, the status of each pin can be individually displayed. The LED is on, that is LED is lit, when the corresponding GPIO pin state is high. This feature is very useful in determining pin activity when programs are running without recourse to additional components or extraneous ad hoc code. There are four servo motor ports adjacent to the DC motor terminals. There are three pins for each servo motor port. Typically, the three pins are orange for PWM signal, red for positive direct current, and brown or black for ground. The four PWM signals, one for each servo motor port, are GP12, GP13, GP14, and GP15. The PWM signal determines the rotation angle of the servo motor. This angle can vary from 0 to 180 degrees for the popular and more typical hobby servo motors depending on the PWM signal value. Of course, there are some servo motors that provide full 360 degrees rotation.
there are two data signals for each DC motor. The two data signals correspond to the two directions of rotation for each motor, forward or backward. There are two DC motors and therefore there are four pins for the data signals. The first motor uses the pins GP8 and GP9. The second motor uses the pins GP10 and GP11. Swapping the motor connection wires will reverse the motor rotation direction. The motor status LEDs indicate the status of the respective signal pins. The DC motor test buttons provide a simple way to check the operations of the motors. The motor will run at full speed when the corresponding button is pressed. There are two buttons for each DC motor, one button for the forward rotation and the other button for the backward rotation. The polarity of the motor's connecting wires sets the rotation direction for a given connection. The buttons are marked as M1A and M1B for the first motor and M2A and M2B for the second motor. The status LEDs display the state of the corresponding GPIO pins assigned for the DC motor operations through the terminals. The LED is on, that is LED is lit, when the corresponding GPIO pin state is high. These LEDs are very useful in determining pin signal values at runtime. There are four LEDs for this purpose, two motors with two terminals each. Press and hold the boot button during the boot process to enter the bootloader mode. This method may be used to load firmware either from the default files or from one's own custom platform variation. The debug port, as the name implies, is intended for low-level debugging of the board. There are two key requirements for debugging the board. An auxiliary PICO will serve as the board in the middle between the host desktop notebook and the robotics controller board. The basic connections for this purpose are shown in the following slide. The Pico Probe utility must be installed on the host computer. The Open OCD on chip debugging software may be useful for this purpose too.
this slide illustrates the wiring connections for the board in the middle method to debug the robotics controller board. The method requires an auxiliary Pico board to act as the board in the middle between the host desktop notebook computer and the robotics controller board. The reset button, as the name implies, sends a reset signal to the RP2040 chip. There are three power options for the board. First, micro USB from the host. Second, LiPo battery. And third, wind terminal. Only one power source is needed for the board and the motors. All three options are controlled by a common on-off switch. Please note, that regulated VIN is recommended if at all available. For introductory learning purposes and the limited applications of the board, running the motors from the same power source as the board may be expedient. However, for longer term and more practical applications, it is strongly recommended that a separate power source be used for the motors with corresponding relay arrangements that are readily available even for these small form factor boards. The micro USB port connects the board to the host computer that uploads programs and firmware to the robotics controller board. Development tasks are performed on the host computer and then the ensuing code is transferred to the robotics controller board through this port. The micro USB port is compliant with USB 1.1 standards. The robotics controller board can be powered optionally using a LiPo battery. This mode is useful to operate the board in an autonomous mode when untethered from any host computer. The VIN terminal supports input voltage that ranges from 3.6 to 6 volts DC. It connects to the regulator input. The on-off switch controls power to the board. All three power sources, micro USB, LiPo, or VIN, are controlled by this single switch. Of course, only one power source is needed by the board. The power LED displays the status of the input power. It is off, that is unlit, when no power is being used by the board, 
even if one of the three power sources is connected. When the power is turned on to the board with the on-off switch in the on position, then the LED is lit green. The default example code will perform the following demonstrations during boot up. Play a melody, flash blue LEDs sequentially, fade colors on RGB LEDs on both sides, toggle GPIO status LEDs using GP20 and GP21 programmable buttons, Press one of the four DC terminal buttons to obtain the data signal status. Browse the example code for better familiarity with circuit Python if necessary. The demonstration to play melody uses the piezo buzzer pin GP22 to play a sequence of notes for a specific duration for each note. It is also possible to generate a tone at a specified frequency with the buzzer. This demonstration flashes the blue LED status lights sequentially. The GPIO pins assigned to the Grove ports are matched to the LEDs as enumerated on the slide. Each Grove port has two assigned GPIO pins. There is an overlap in the assignments for two ports. In other words, there are seven Grove ports, but 13 status lights. This demonstration performs a very simple color fade on the two RGB LEDs using pins GP20 and 21. The states for the color fade are listed on the slide. The demonstration cycles through these states sequentially with a nominal delay between each state. Of course, many other variations for color fade can be easily accomplished by tweaking the RGB values, the increment or decrement, and the delay interval.
This demonstration illustrates the use of the programmable buttons using pins GP20 and GP21. The two buttons have different sequences. For the button corresponding to GP20 pin, the sequence is turn on all blue LEDs, run all attached DC motors backwards and forwards at 50% speed, and rotate all attached servo motors to zero degrees position. For the button corresponding to GP21, the sequence is turn off all blue LEDs, stop all attached DC motors, and rotate all attached servo motors to 180 degrees position. There are four buttons to perform tests on the DC motors. There are two buttons for each of the two DC motors. M1A turns the first motor in one direction. M1B turns the first motor in the reverse direction. M2A turns the second motor in one direction. M2B turns the second motor in the reverse direction. The servo motor tests rotate the motors to start and end positions. The duty cycle is expressed as a 16-bit integer value. The maximum value of the duty cycle, that is 100%, is applied when the value is the highest number possible for the 16-bit integer word. The duty cycle is 50% when one half of this value is specified. This latter value is used in the demonstration for all four servo motors when connected individually. There are four different environments for application development on the robotics controller board. These environments are CircuitPython, MicroPython, C, C++, and Arduino Pico Core. CircuitPython is a fork of MicroPython. It supports the Python core application programming interface API modules. The current release is 7.0.0-alpha.5. It is marked as alpha, which means that one should use it with caution because not all planned features have been implemented. Some existing features may not be available in the release candidate version, Undocumented experiences are inevitable with the alpha version of any software.
MicroPython is a lean implementation of Python 3. It has a full compiler and runtime support. It is optimized to run on microcontrollers. There are supplementary modules for low-level hardware access. It is the official Python-like environment for Raspberry Pi Pico development. C, C++ is supported too. There is an official that is from Raspberry Pi Foundation, an installation script for the software development kit and the recommended integrated development environment, namely VS Code. The other integrated development environments include Eclipse and C Lion. The Arduino Pico Core environment is gaining momentum. It can be installed from within the Arduino IDE through library management.
This video tutorial was a very simple introduction to the Cytron Maker Pi RP2040 robotics controller board. Only the built-in examples were demonstrated including but not limited to buzzer, color fade, status LEDs and motor tests. This video was prepared with assistance on special effects from Sufi Isma at Gmail. The documentation at Raspberry Pi Foundation and Cytron Technologies provided quick start assistance. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the free open source software from Fritzing for assembly diagrams and schematics, Inkscape for artwork preparation, LibreOffice for documentation, OBS Studio for recordings, Kid and Live for nonlinear editing, and of course Ubuntu for the platform services. The music is from the YouTube audio library. It is called The Bucket List by Kinsas Morera. A very big thank you to everyone. That's all folks. Thanks for taking the time to view this presentation. Would love to hear from you with your feedback. You are always welcome to be critical in any which way you can. Until next time, bye for now.